Coming up, back in the brush between the cacti and the wildflowers is the Camp House in Nixon, Texas. And our whole motto for this place here, and you've seen on some of our logos, it ain't fancy, but it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, if, and I always tell folks, if you're expecting a real fancy, formal place, uh -huh. you probably ought not come out here. Right. Meet Bud Box and the venue he created to give back to the community. I want folks to be able to come out and kick back and enjoy and, and leave all their troubles and all the worries of the world and life and everything else behind them. Come out and enjoy good music, good fellowship, and good food. Plus, if the flag's flying, the barbecue is ready. The owner of Pioneer Barbecue shares why she left New York City for small town life. It really is like a dream come true. A little slice of paradise. Yeah with a side of brisket and not to have to say a little prayer that it's enough to be enough artist alex koba pours his heart into the music and shares the roots that took him from the valley to the stage there may be you know people that sing better or write better but there will be nobody that is going to outwork me because i saw that from my parents no matter how tired you are no matter how long the drive is, yeah, you know, go. If somebody asks you to go, go mm -hmm. and give everything you have on that stage. Texas Voices features the artists, musicians, and creatives of our great state next. We'll say a little prayer and give thanks that it's enough to be enough. I'm Lindsay Lippman and welcome to Nixon, Texas, a historic town full of friendly people, excellent barbecue and camp house concerts. The music venue was the vision of longtime resident Bud Box as a way to give back to the community and the artists. When Bud Box gets an idea, how would you describe your dad? Visionary. He's a dreamer and someone who's gonna, he's gonna do it. And it's best to get on board. <laughs> Many more, Billy. Thank you very much for being a good sport. My favorite thing that he said was, people are either gonna think I'm crazy <laughs> or uh, they're gonna see it with me, so. Son Cody has been going to shows with his dad for decades. From riding in his truck, you know, as a young boy, um, all that old outlaw music, um, that, was, that was definitely what I was raised on. Took me to show to show, just, it was kind of our, our way to connect. It was sports and it was music. It's been a dry year. Now pre-concert, you can find him running sound cables or setting up the merch booth. A logo he designed, by the way. Uh, we had a really friendly donkey, and so I actually got a photo of her really close up, and she was the original logo. It also gives it the, you're in the middle of nowhere, you know, there's the critters, <laughs> the goats, the donkeys, the coyotes. It tells you what the vibe is out here, you know. Mm -hmm. It's going to be better than you expect, but it's not going to be so fancy you need to you know, dress up, so. <laughs> Might be middle of nowhere, but the center of something special. If you, if you have a dream, you know, pursue it. And, and you know, regardless of what others might say, and, and in this particular case, some might say that, that you're, you know, a little on the, you know, crazy side, but, but I want folks to be able to come out and kick back and enjoy and, and leave all their troubles and all the worries of the world and life and everything else behind them. Come out and enjoy good music, good fellowship, and good food. Anybody can buy a concert ticket and go sit with 500 to 1,000 or 5,000 people and listen to and see a, a package show. But not everybody can sit and listen to the songwriter 
listen to him tell the story about how the song came to be and then listen to the story itself. Did you ever think someday that you would own such a venue no. and, and do this? <laughs> no. It, uh, 16 years ago, uh, I had this old house back here in the back. There was brush all around it. You couldn't even see it from, you drove up to it and it was open and there was critters and buzzards and everything else in here. So we started cleaning it up and clearing brush and you know, it just kind of happened. But you could say all signs were pointing in this direction, and music was the guide, especially at a specific Willie Nelson picnic where Bud found his biggest supporter, Arvling. I, I really was convinced that much like the Incredible Hulk, I was doomed to roam the planet alone. Uh -huh. And then, <laughs> then I met Bud. And I, did, I didn't know anybody was really gonna, gonna enjoy doing the stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. I, music is, it's, it's just my favorite thing. Going and just listening, and it's just, we, we both have such an appreciation for the artist, and we both, it's been fun introducing each other to new artists that I didn't know about or he didn't know about, and we, we have just really had a ball. Camp House Concerts is a concept of creating a place where both the artists and the audience equally enjoy. I couldn't tell you how many briskets I've cooked, and it's just, of natural, I guess. The brisket is tender, and the company you keep here, salt of the earth. It's a, it's a good community. I mean, we're just uh, like any other small town that's kind of just off the beaten path, and it's just a good place to be. When the sun goes down, for all of us, life doesn't get much. Better. Don't get any better than that. That's right. It's magical. We've done the big, big venues, and and but right here in Nixon, Texas, that's it's the. It's better than traveling anywhere. It's right here in the backyard. Bud and Arveling don't do it to get rich. They're already rich in the things that truly matter. Friends, family, and a focus on community. So anything we make above what it costs to do this, we want to give it back to the community. You know, don't be take, take, take. You know, it's, it, it's, it's fun and it's a good feeling to, to give back and, and, to, and to help folks out. Bud is forever helping people. That's just how he is. He, he, if he's just always going to do what's right. And that's how he lives his life, which is amazing. As the word gets around, more artists want to play here and people show up. But they'll keep growing with one thing in mind. And, and our whole motto of this place here, and you see it on some of our logos, it ain't fancy, but it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so if, and I always tell folks, if you're expecting a real fancy, formal place, uh -huh. you probably ought not come out here. Right. Still ahead, we'll hear music from artist Alex Koba, but first, it takes a village. It really is like a dream come true. More from Nixon, Texas, next. Welcome back. As soon as you drive into Nixon, you will smell some wonderful barbecue wafting from Pioneer Barbecue. The owners left New York City to come here for the life they really wanted. An ad on Craigslist is how native Texan Amy Collins and her husband moved nearly 2,000 miles to find their forever home. We were ready for something new, something smaller. We wanted to kind of move out into the country and we just happened to find this place for sale. We came down and checked it out and we really liked the small town, it has a cute little main street area. Everyone here was really welcoming whenever we came down here, so it just seemed like the right fit for us. The writing was on the wall, and they haven't looked back. Sitting out on our porch and letting the dogs just run around and watching the cows, and especially on days like today where it's so beautiful, it it's really is like a dream come true, especially because it felt like such a long time coming for us finally like settling into somewhere where we felt like we could really call home. A little slice of paradise. Yeah. With a side of brisket, <laughs> which a huge portion of brisket and a, and a couple of sides. Oh, and about that brisket, if the flag is flying, you should come on in. People love our brisket. Um, they also love our ribs. We do our ribs a little bit differently. My husband is from St. Louis and they like things saucy up there, which is not something that is a uh, typical Texas style thing. So we do our pork ribs a little bit saucy and people find that um, it's different. So they really like it and they find it interesting. Um, our chicken is very popular. I think people also really appreciate that all of our sides are truly homemade. A lot of times when you hit these like small town hole in the wall kind of spots, the sides are kind of an afterthought. 
but our sides are very good and very popular. People come just to get like quarts of sides. The sides are what brings Bud Box to their door today to carry back to their guests at Camp House concerts. He's a regular and so are a lot of other folks in town. Our customers are a mix of people just passing through. We're on sort of a track from Austin to the coast, so we get a lot of people just driving, and especially during the summertime. We get a lot of oil field workers, truckers, and then just people who work around town that come in multiple times a week for barbecue, so we've really gotten to know everybody that works around here and eats around here. Just make sure you get there before it's gone. Coming up, artist Alex Koba performs at the camp house and shares his music legacy that started in the valley. If I'm everything you say I am. There are some artists who have performed at the camp house that keep getting invited back because they're just that good. And artist Alex Koba is one of them. We sat down to talk to him about his musical roots that began in the Rio Grande Valley. Yeah, and why we keep in school Yeah, and why we keep in school It was our own little world, you know, in between the valley and the nearest Metroplex being Corpus is the King Ranch. So you're really cut off from the rest of the world, uh, really cut off from the rest of the state of Texas. So like songwriting and being able to do this type of thing was, was foreign. Um, I didn't know you could pick up a guitar and go play for you know, less than a hundred people and it'd be a career. Before the gray came, found it's time to settle in, taking over. Where the color once had been, there was a small town boy, Tim Badge and a gun, chasing the western sun and moved a little easier when he was young. So do you feel like the music found you or you found the music? 100% from the womb, <laughs> really. Yeah. Uh, my mom sings and, and still does, and you know her voice is 100% the soundtrack to my life. In the womb, she sings when she's in the kitchen, she sings when she's in the car. Of course, growing up at church and hearing her voice, I think I've played behind her on the piano at a hundred different funerals and weddings <laughs> growing up, and it just, it was there. So it was really weird not to do this. And I think if you ask her, or if you can rewind the clock and ask her when she signed me up for piano lessons, if, what is that Alan Jackson song? I didn't know that he'd take it that far. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's like, oh, you're gonna do this? Okay. She thought, well, uh, we thought it would be a good skill for you to have. <laughs> right, right. We'll say a little prayer and give thanks that it's enough to be enough. Give a lot of credit to like the Red Ripper songwriters. You know, Walt Wilkins, obviously, number one on that list. But being able to meet guys like Drew and Josh. So Drew Kennedy and Josh Greider. <clears throat> you know, I, we're, we're kind of around the same age. And, and like I said, I didn't really meet people where it's like, hey, we have a family. And hey, we do this. And you can do this. And you, as long as you, you treat it like a job and you study and you put forth the effort into really writing good songs and knowing who's come before you and having a respect yeah. level for it, that's what I learned from them. There are different pockets and there are different worlds um, and I just found what I thought was home for me. If you don't mind, dear. Do you have a favorite song that you've written so far and do you feel like you've written your best or your best is yet to come? I, I wrote one song sitting next to my grandfather while he passed and I think wow. That song, for me, is just always going to be that song. I've written songs for my son, you know. Uh, the first record is very much a uh, quiet songwriter record because it was all written while he's napping, <laughs> you know. And it's like, don't wake the baby. Anybody that, that loves songwriting um, is looking to be a guy or a Towns you know, that are successful and have those things. But I mean, Guy's gone, Towns is gone, people still talk about him, uh, and Lyle's still out there doing it. To me, it's really just, if I can tell my stories and they carry, and I can do this uh, 
for as long as they let me, <laughs> uh, I want to. There may be you know, people that sing better or write better, but there will be nobody that is gonna outwork me because I saw that from my parents. Right. And it's just put the time in, no matter how tired you are, um, no matter how long the drive is, yeah. you know, go. If somebody asks you to go, go mm -hmm. and give everything you have on that stage out of respect for the invitation. Yeah. Still ahead, Alex performs his original song, Enough. Hi, I'm Alex Coba. I'm out of Houston, Texas, originally from the Rio Grande Valley. This is a song, Enough, uh, I wrote for my grandparents and growing up in the Rio Grande Valley from a farming family. Honey, I'm going to try and sell a load of something that I harvested early in the morning before you were up. And I left some coffee warming for you in the pot Cause I know you'll need it first thing in the morning when the kids get up. And would you say a little prayer that it yields just enough to be enough? If you don't mind, dear, could I ask you for another day where you keep it all together and pray for clear weather while I'm away? And I know this season has been harder than the one before, but I'll work it even longer to try to one day afford not to have to say a little prayer that it's enough to be enough. Enough to make it through another long winter And try to help my brother out His farm has been in better days than it's in now If we can make it to another hot summer It'll be our Independence Day When we won't have to worry if the kids will be okay We'll just say a little prayer and give thanks that it's enough to be enough. I'm headed home now, and every mile marker seems to serve to remind me of all the little prayers you said over the years. That my truck may make it And I can somehow outrun the storm And that all this time away from you is worth fighting for So won't you wear down another couple beads on that rosary for me And pray that it's enough Enough to make it through another long winter And try to help my brother out His farm has been in better days than it's in now If we can make it to another hot summer It'll be our Independence Day When we won't have to worry if the kids will be okay would you say a little prayer and give thanks that it's enough? We'll say a little prayer and give thanks that it's enough to be enough. Say a little prayer and give thanks that it's enough to be enough.
Thanks, Alex, and thanks to the Box family for having us out. Stay tuned next week as we sit down with Tina Wilkins, Tyler McCullum, and Stacy Bell from the Camp House Concert Series here in Nixon, Texas. We'll see you next time. Oh, that breeze. Blown again. Okay, let's see if this is okay. How does my hair look? Decent? Flowy. Yeah, but flowy in a good way or flowy in a bad way? Okay, three, two, one. And I'm sure that your wife does not mind that you come home smelling like brisket, right? I mean, <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> that smell no. is not, you don't get tired of that smell, right? No, ma'am, I, I don't. She might, but I'm, I'm okay with it. What are your favorite things about Bud and vice versa, about each other? This isn't the, the love yeah. connection, okay, yeah. but I'm just, yeah. I just am curious I feel like we're on the, the, yeah, like we're right. on the newlywed game. Hey, we're going yeah. Yeah. We're just doing yeah. the newlywed <laughs> game here right now. <laughs> That's gonna be. I think she asked you the question first. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna have to say hard, like, okay, it's been a rough year with her. No, I'm just kidding. No, hey, wait, no. <laughs> You get that cameo in. Let it, it stabilize it or are you just gonna hold it? Throw it. Okay, ready? Yeah, there you go. I'm not in it, am I? Further back. There you go. Because your shadow is in it for a minute. Are you already rolling? Yeah. Okay. Shoot. Try again. No, 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 back. Uh, like, come this way because you're, it's that shadow. Okay, now you're good. That was pretty good. I gotta put the, I gotta put the cape on. <laughs> Just Hold put on. it on the inside. 